This lady looks like fun. Entertaining with cards. I don't think they mean that in the way I thought they did. Hmm. Thought she was playing poker or something. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Well, I needed to pull over and I saw a sign for another antique store and it's Relics Antiques. And they're a mall, apparently. I'm just outside of Cleveland, Tennessee. You'll see they had to put that sign up because they've got the road closed to through traffic sign next to it. That could be not good for them, but as a picker, you know, I hate to say it, it sounds terrible, but if someone hasn't been able to get traffic to them because people think the road's closed, well, there might be something lurking in there that's been sitting there a while and they're ready to deal on. So let's go take a look. Well, we made it to the end of the road and here we are at Relics Antiques. For the end of the road, it's pretty busy, so I can see why they're located out here. Let's take a look at the front of the building. Looks like there's a couple of ornamental urns and an old gate that's been painted bright yellow. And a very dilapidated birdhouse and porch swing. Ooh, St. Francis. That's a very tall one. I really do like garden art, and those things weigh a ton, but when you've got the moss on it like that and it has obvious age, those are attractive to people. There's a couple of really beautiful pieces in here. That hair comb to the right is quite extravagant. That's going to be late 1930s with cobalt and black flat back rhinestones in celluloid with a sort of tortoise shell to it. Next to it is an Art Deco hairpin of the same era. Then a good pair of 1950s cat's eye glasses. Price on the hairpin is 25. I can't see the other tags, but I think 75 is the price on the hair comb. And that's probably right at the top end of retail, but they are hard to find in good condition now. With all the jewelry boxes we see, this particular one is nice because of the oval sides and the hexagonal shape. And this makes it quite a bit more expensive than a typical oval or round with the clear. It's also footed with winged cherubs. They have this priced at 150. That might seem extravagant, but I have seen them sell for around that price in Palm Beach. So there are customers for these things. The perfume bottles are nicely done as well. Let's see if they have a price on those. It appears to be $25, which is a good deal. It has its dauber. It's in good condition. Definitely a good deal for a collector and not too far above where you could make some money reselling if you took it to the right place. This dealer in general has a really nice approach. It's very elegant. It's very gold. It's sort of a hybrid of Hollywood Regency and Victoriana. It's really well put together in my personal opinion. And the pieces appear to be genuinely old, although I think there may have been some restorations on this very attractive nude lamp here. It looks like she may have her original paint or may have been repainted. In any event, she's got a lovely Art Nouveau face. This will be cast in some sort of a soft metal. They refer to that as spelter. It's either been rewired or it is a possibility that it is a 1950s piece. They've redone those on various occasions over the decades. The Praying Hands bookends are a classic. These are actually hollow inside, so they're not as heavy as they look. That makes them 1950s and 60s era. You can also tell that because of the file marks. The earlier castings really wouldn't have had anything so obvious as the scrapings on this piece. Ashtray is Florentine, and you notice they have a few of these sitting plateaus. These are very clear. Oftentimes these have spots in the back of the mirror, and they sell for about half the price they have on them in that condition. That's priced at 125 There's also a pair of Mary Gregory stems here that are quite attractive to me because the hand painting is good quality. It's not sloppy. It's very detailed. These are likely to be done in Europe because the faces are pink. 
In the American pieces, the faces are typically white. The price on those is $1.55 for the set. This is a neat space because they have a lot of things that are presented almost like a library or a den. And there's items in here from Victorian to 1960s tourist items found on trips overseas. It's a really interesting mix to my eye. And there's some particular things I want to show in here because I think some of them are rather stand out, at least in terms of price. Here we have an ashtray. This is Art Nouveau. It's brass. It's from about 1910 and it has the bit that would make the box open if you put it on end. Now you'd need a larger box than this, but this is a nice old Brown Palace Hotel box from Denver, so that's cute that that goes with it. It is marked on the back in a way that indicates an older foundry mark. Those big screws would not have been used as a, at a later date. They would have more likely been flat had they done that. You can see that there is some surface wear, especially at the corners. This indicates that this is not a reproduction. I think for that price, there's more interest in smoking collectibles these days. I think I'll get that. Lots of little gauges, interesting books, clock faces, the apothecary jar here, the ferrous sulfate is priced at 49. This is a neat old Kodak camera and it's color rather than just a black body. And the colored ones in the reds and the browns and this sort of thing, especially with the box in such great condition, this is priced at 75 and that's really a fair price for what it is because of the presence of the box. I think this is a fun way to display old photos, these branches that just leaf out there. Ooh, family friends of mine when I was a kid would talk about having had this car when they were very young, 1952 MG. At least I believe that's 52. It's a pretty neat old British sports car. Okay, these handcuffs have the keys and that's what people look for. They are older. And my goodness, they're only $15. Well, that is a score for me. I get about 45 for these. And we've got the name of the company right on there. They are made in Japan, so they're not as durable or big as the big police handcuffs, but they will do. Someone will love these for that price. Only $15, very excited. These are priced well for what they are. It's a little hard to focus through the glass, but the three of these are Eisenberg and they're very large 1940s or 50s pieces. They all say that they're a little bit as is. If they just need round stones or something simple, they're worth buying because even in this market, Eisenberg still sells pretty well. Now the one on the left has corrosion around some of the stones and each one of those stones starts to really mount up the repair price. So that may not be viable. It's worth about 100, 120 potentially on the open market, but you would have to put $30 worth of rhinestones in it and then you start to lose your profit. So I think I'll take a look at the other two. Here's a common thing you don't see very often anymore because this is an ice coupon book. In the old days before refrigeration, you had to get blocks of ice delivered to put in your ice box to keep your food cold. And so you've got each of these for 500 pounds of ice. And this is dated 1940. We assume that everybody got refrigerators right away when they became widespread in the 1920s, but they were expensive. And then there were war restrictions on production. The refrigerator companies started making military equipment. So a lot of people didn't get them until after World War II. This lady looks like fun. Entertaining with cards. I don't think they mean that in the way I thought they did. Hmm. Thought she was playing poker or something. This bottle opener might be worth buying because it looks like it's off an old soda machine and somebody restoring an old soda machine that needs a star. Now Star's the company that makes the ones we see all the time with the soda fountain labels on them, but 
This really looks like it's a flush mount for some sort of a different kind of device. And it's got the corkscrew as well. That's just unusual enough. I think I'm going to take that and take a chance on it. Scrapbookers like these, especially the holders, because the holders are neat looking and offices used to have a ton of these, depending on what they were doing. $45 is not a bad price for that carousel. And these little bits on it are priced depending on what they say. If it's some old company name, people aren't that interested. But this one says waste disposal. That could be fun for scrapbooking, especially if you're putting pictures of your son's room in the scrapbook. This is an old foundry mold, meaning that it was used to cast some sort of a device that was being made in an industrial setting. And there's another one here. These started to come out into antique malls about 20 or 30 years ago when we started losing a lot of our industry. And they shut these old factories down and people would go through and look for interesting old stuff. A lot of these are being made into art pieces now. This one has real symmetry. So I could see where that could be done into something very modernist looking. This on the other hand looks like it's for some very specific use and it looks to me like it might have to do with latches and door handles but it's hard to say because we're seeing the reverse negative. This is a watch spring box. These would have been pretty common because a hundred years ago lots of people had watches that had mainsprings and had to be fixed. However, recently a lot of the watch spring making has disappeared and watch repairmen have to do this by hand and repair women. There are women in the trade now. It's a very specialized trade to a very small audience, but you can make good money as a watchmaker if you go through a whole lot of training. But with the watch springs being hard to get now, this box is worth $6.50, but if it was full of good watch springs that people are looking for, it could be worth potentially three digits. So these are something to check in estates. And then I think this is cool because it's a brass ship's ashtray, but it has a compass in the top. And if it worked, I would get it. But it looks like it is lacking its spinner, unfortunately. So we'll have to leave that one there. Bet it was the top of a flagpole. And look here. This is an original legal holiday today. Election day. No business transacted will be interesting to see how we end up voting this year with the mail-ins and all that. Yes, even old dog tags are collectible, and I don't mean the military kind, although those definitely are too. These little ones from Memphis. I see ones from St. Petersburg that are in the shape of fire hydrants as well. That was a cute thing they like to do. And then this is interesting because this appears to be the Chinese zodiac. I am a snake, having been born in one of the many year cycles. I believe it's a 12 year cycle, and so this represents all 12 of the Chinese zodiac figures. I wonder how much this is. 14. Ah, I see it's from Korea. Probably an early piece by American importing standards, maybe mid 20th century, possibly even before the Second World War. I get a kick out of it. I wonder if there's a customer for this. I think I might take that. I have to say I am impressed with the display in this mall. This looks like a New York apartment. Very interesting combination of deco and modernism in this stark black and white that we're seeing in a lot of interior decorating magazines. It harkens back to the 30s. It also harkens back to the 1980s when they had their deco revival and these colors were really in fashion. There is a lot of neat stuff here. We see the Hager Gazelle. This would be a 1980s piece, part of that deco revival era. But then we have these really great mirrors. This one appears to be made of a plastic that would be in the 1950s modern era. This one with the birds in flight. 
It's going to be late 30s, early 40s in Chinese red. This Art Deco design is a service tray made, I believe, by the Farberware Company in conjunction with Harker Pottery. This one is not marked, but typically when we see those combinations, the Art Deco, again, 1930s, that is a really neat looking piece. It's only $14. That does not seem like a bad price for what it is. Now, Treasure Craft made this Madonna, but they were not the only ones. This one, I believe, is a California pottery, Serena. Yeah. I don't know this particular iteration, but this Madonna in the shroud in the modernist design is a classic we see in several different pottery companies' lines. And this one's only 1995. I like the texturing on the shroud. It really gives it more dimension than just a flat color. Lots of cool chrome. The old Smith Corona typewriter with the green keys. Always like that. Picture of Jack Holt, who I believe was a movie star in the 20s and 30s. These are nice. Now, a lot of people like black amethyst glass from the 1930s. These are Czechoslovakian, and what's great about them is this silver overlay. Now, this is silver electroplate. It's not like the overlay that is a chunk of silver where if the glass broke, you'd have silver left. This is really like silver electroplated, almost like paint, but it's a really nice design. These definitely are Czech. I'm sure that the would be very difficult to find the mark if they have one, but they have it attributed right, and they're asking 65 for the pair, which I think is reasonable for what they are. They've also got some neat cast spelter lamps in the 120 to 165 dollar range, and the boudoir lamp in the back is 99. None of these prices are bad. I certainly would expect to see these things priced a lot higher in a major city. Now the table here is fairly new. This is advertising Anheuser beer, but the Lucite pieces around it are going to be right around 1980. On the right we have this one, which is Ultima, signed by Licia Zanath, and this is a glass sculpture. And Ultima was out of Miami. This one is going to date to the 1980s again, when the studio glass really starts to come back into the fore. This is a Van Teel signed sculpture. I just got two Van Teel Torchier lamps that I put in my space in Florida. I didn't have time to film it. Hopefully they'll be there when I go back so I can show you because they're pretty neat if you like this era, which I do. This is priced at $265. The Van Teel signature, hopefully you'll be able to see here. Yes, it came out very well, actually. Sometimes they're much more obscure. It's worth looking for signatures because Van Teel is starting to sell for a premium. For a long time, people really didn't bother with signatures because these pieces were just fun and cool and they were priced for their design, but now there is something in the name. The Hall Airflow Teapot in the Cobalt Blue is another pretty Hall design that's from the Art Deco era. So while I'm thinking of it, please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also, hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. I think I'm pretty happy with this space. Yes, it's got some neat linens and a nice red and white check quilt, and I like this sort of thing. And actually, I'm curious. Oh, I got really excited. It said $18, but it was for that other piece. Okay, this one's 120 That's probably about right on that one because it's an interesting pattern. But what I saw that I really like, besides Mr. Santa Claus and the Happy German and the Swinging Clock, which if it was plugged in, you'd see the motion lamp making that burn like a fire. But no, the thing I'm really excited about above that very pretty picture is this sign that says Recreation Room. 
This is the kind of kitsch, fun, big stuff that helps me draw people into my booths at shows. I've been kind of lacking anything like this lately. And it's priced at 69 I think we'll see if they might take an offer because I just think that's a really fun thing from the 60s and probably from a lounge. And while we're at it, we really should talk about the pretty painting because it's a nice oil on canvas. It's got a little crack allure. We can show you that. That's when you start seeing this sort of crackling through the paint in the canvas. Usually has to do with having been in a place with temperature and humidity changes. It's not damaging the piece at this point. Most people would put it in a nice climate controlled area and be satisfied. This is by an artist named Charles Leslie, who's a listed landscape artist. I believe it is an original frame. You can tell by some of the losses that it's been around for a long time. But it's framed in such a way that you really can't see his signature. But he was a painter in the English countryside doing landscape paintings in the mid-Victorian era. They have this priced at $9.50, and I don't know that artist well enough to know if that's a fair price, but it's certainly under $1,000, so it's in the realm of listed artists from the Victorian age that are affordable. I seem to be running into these enamel kitchen tables a lot. This one was made so that the metal was printed in a way that looked like wood to match the wood grain in the piece, which is actually painted on, so the whole thing is kind of a big faux finish. It's a design style that we really see in the 1930s, but it kind of harkens back to cottage style. And this would pull out and have a nice sort of rounded edge so that you don't run into it and hit the corners. They're very cute in a certain application if you like cottage style. Here's another fun space, and the chest at the front is a nice modernist design. And I was a little surprised to find out it was by John Whittacombe. Now, we don't necessarily think of John Whittacombe in the pantheon of modernist designers because a lot of the most famous Whittacombe pieces are painted in florals and they're really beautiful. I had a nice set that the owner of a mall that I really liked decided to buy from me at one point and I did not realize that they did very much and I knew they were in the modern era but I didn't really realize that they did a lot with modern lines. It seems to be very good quality as their pieces always were. And when we open it up, it has all the dividers. So you could use this either in a bedroom or a dining area. And it's priced at $7.99. It is the original finish. And that makes a difference because it's not impossible to refinish modern furniture, but oftentimes they change the color and the people who are purists know and they won't pay top dollar. Neat other things. Here's the a static microphone that I had in a previous video and it's priced at 65 so I feel good about having bought that. I usually get between 50 and 65 for them. They have several radios here too and I like this Motorola because it's got the happy late 1960s powder blue color. This was really popular about 1968. But the plastic was getting thinner. It wasn't Bakelite anymore, and so it's more prone to chipping, as you can see there. So that's something to look out for with those. The musical instruments are old student models that are not in great shape. They are priced very economically to hang on the wall, though. Those are all between $27 and $39, so it's great for the look. And the dancer drummer she cuts a nice profile there and that is $25 for the very tiki looking glasses which I would say were from the 1950s not a bad price at all here's something cute that we see in lamps sometimes this is the Dutch lamp you would see a lot of just basic little 1930s pottery molded pieces from the USA outfitted by pouring concrete in to hold these florals and then there would be a wire put in the back to electrify it with something like a Christmas tree bulb. I've seen Shawnee pieces used this way. I've seen a lot of American Midwestern pottery companies done up into these lamps. You could really make a collection of them all your own. And this one's only $25 and they're often priced about that. I think they're really cute for what they are and for 
the amount they sell. The McCoy 70s Owl Cookie Jar, priced at $60. Those have become pretty popular. A lot of people remember those from the early 70s, if you were around then. And then I see they're having a sale on the blue and red spatterware. These are good colors, and you can tell that they are heavier gauge. Although this one's a little on the thin side, but they did start to thin them down when they were able to stamp things thinner because partly war material restrictions and also because they didn't make money by sending heavier pieces around. This one's nice because it's got the lid, it's kind of the usual wear, but they're sure neat looking and definitely ready for 4th of July over here. Look at this happy kitchen space. You know, this is a fun place and it's really well displayed. I'm glad I came here. I'm enjoying seeing things put in a nice presentation. You know, you do enough flea markets and then you kind of long to see things put out in a more homey way. This is a company called Nilok. N-I-L-O-A-K is from Arkansas. Molded pieces came after their mission wear, which was made of natural clays that had natural color in them. That's very expensive stuff. But in the Depression, they needed to make things that were less expensive so they could stay in business. And doing a single mold and pouring into it was the solution. This is priced at 25. That's a fair price. The Parrot is a harder one of theirs to find. It's actually not one that I've seen other than in the museum in Camden, Arkansas, which is a great museum if you like pottery and get that way. And in one show, I think, in Portland many years ago. So I think it's a hard one to get. A lot of depression glass. Bunnies. Fiesta and... A lot of people think this is Fiesta, but this is Hank's craft. It is collectible. You see this set at $75. They sell for $65 to $75 typically these days. And they are a good Fiesta go-along because they have the rings. But it was a different company that's thicker and heavier than Fiesta. A little more dense feeling. And it has the electronics inside, so you can poach your eggs in the morning right at the table and then serve them without having to run back and forth to the kitchen or make a big fuss and turn the stove on. So it was a handy thing in the 30s. That's why we see them from time to time. Fiesta's less expensive twin for the Woolworth Company was Harlequin. Each of the stores wanted their own dinnerware in the 30s because it was a popular thing and people were wanting to modernize. And it was inexpensive to make and they could make profit on it, which in the Depression was a big deal. 15 pieces of this for $75 is really a good price. The bowls should sell for about 10 a piece, and there's five of them, so there's some room in that. I always thought this set was cool. This is Shawnee pottery. In the 50s, they switched out of the cute and whimsical things like the cookie jars we saw earlier, and they switched over to these speckled wares and modernist things, but it does have the Shawnee logo on it in the usual manner. This set's priced at 20 Nowadays, that's the right price. There was a time that they sold for, gosh, 35 but people have now realized that there were more of them than we thought. Calamity Anne's Unique Antiques. Well, let's see what she's got. Minnow buckets. People like old galvanized things and the painting on them. This one's got a zip code, so it's going to be probably from about 1970, but it's got the right look. They have this one priced at 25 Let's see how fun this is. Barbecue menu, $14. These novelty barbecue menus are a fun thing to collect. Xine, the lead singer of the band X, will wear old aprons on stage and then throw them out and they're signed with her signature so all her fans end up with an apron if they're close enough to the front row. And she loves anything that looks like this. Just silly stuff. Chicken with the feathers on. It's really marble cake. Don't take it for granted. I'm not saying it's high humor, but... Our oysters are stewed and our coffee is drunk all day long. Fresh milk. Three hours ago it was grass. Anyway, we have fun in this business. We get to see what people thought was entertainment and... Sometimes you laugh, and sometimes you laugh at the fact that they thought that way. Now this is a nice old harmonica box, and this is not the big company. This is Bohm rather than 
the company that we see all the time, which is Honer, 1925 Violin King. And it's the 75th anniversary of them. Don't they look regal? The oak frame with the grain showing is something that is very good in a lodge setting. And it definitely works with this print, which is going to date to about 1890. Got a bunch of the old Vanity Fair magazines. People love to frame these caricatures. Spy was the signature that you would see on these. They were published in Vanity Fair in England. And they are mostly caricatures of people who were famous in the day. Some of them are really great. You can tell they're making fun of them. A lot of times it's the politicians that they lampoon. And even though you don't know who they are, you get the joke. <laughs> this lamp is pretty. I like the blue crystals. I expect something like this to probably be from the 1970s. And it looks like the cord's been repaired. Just an unusual look. I like the flame in it. It's, it's definitely, again, it has that very opulent style that you can use with antique items and vintage items in a way that give something a certain panache. I want to show this because it says Norris Dam Souvenir, but I believe this little metal dog is a repainted version of the ones made by Griswold originally. Griswold that makes the cast iron cookware gave a lot of these out as little promotionals and they are worth some money. So don't overlook them or think they're just some cutesy thing and throw them on the computer for a few bucks because some of them are pretty good. And here I want to point out something that would be scarcer than the other pictures because this is a couple and they are black folks and that is certainly less common. It's neat the way it's mounted in this metal frame. These would have been originally with an easel but eventually hung. They're almost like the lids to the old cookie tins back then. And then they would mount the photos on the front in some sort of a celluloid ornament. This one's not in great shape, but it's priced at 29 because of the subject. A lot of black families wouldn't have had money to do something like this then, so that's what makes them more special. And it's nice because it's an actual representation rather than a caricature. Very cute folk art doll here, priced at 75 And then this book is cool because it is by Caldecott. And if you remember as a kid, you were always being told the Caldecott award-winning book was the one you should get from the bookmobile. Well, that's because Caldecott was a big children's writer in the Victorian era, and the award was named after. An elegy on the glory of her sex, and they mean the fact that she's a woman. Madame Blaze never wanted a good word. She never followed wicked ways unless she was sinning. My goodness, what is she doing? In good condition, some of these Caldecott books can go for a hundred dollars. So that is something to see if you find one. I found one in an estate sale in all the years I've been doing this. And Little Orphan Annie, also very popular, came out right about 1905, as I recall. These would be from the first part of the 20th century. They're priced at about 35. Here is something very unusual. I haven't run into one of these in many, many years. It's called English cane wear. It's an unglazed porcelain, so it does show some of its age. Dirt has gotten into the bisque porcelain. And that is part of the appeal actually to a lot of collectors is that it is as it is. Now she is as is in the nose as well, which is unfortunate, but these are very difficult to find because these date back to about 1840 or 1850 in England. She has her hat with the feathers. She's got the big wide dress like a goatee dress from France around the time of the 1850s. She's really quite incredible to see. You just don't find things like this very often and she's priced at $185. For the condition, I can't imagine why that wouldn't be a fair price. And for a serious collector of this sort of wear, she would be worth restoration. Boy, they've got a lot of cute stuff here, and I want to show you this. 
This is hull. This is a pattern called ebb tide. This is the pitcher. All of it is really fantastically spongebob -y. <laughs> I mean, it's all just these really amazing shells and fish and they're very mid-50s. This was the point where Hull realized that they could not reproduce the gloss glazes that they had done before they had their explosion and fire in 1950 and the newly rebuilt factory just couldn't do that so they had to come out with different lines that really took advantage of the new gloss glazes that their machinery could do well and this line is just really fun. It's priced at 39. I think that's actually pretty good. Ebb Tide is one pattern that still sells for pretty high prices because if I ever see any of the fish, I'll show you. They're just really phenomenal. Well, this place has interesting stuff from all over the world and there's a lot more to show. So join me for another video in a few days. I'm George the Antique Nomad on Periscope, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and here on YouTube. See you soon. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!